cardio quest game where you label ECG, abnormal, normal ECG. Now you can play it against a robot, which will give you an abnormality score. I shouldn't say against the robot, you can play it with the robot, so you can collaborate with AI, whatever. It's a fuzzy, fuzzy logic tool that looks at uh, the number of positive peaks, negative peaks, row amplitude, the shape, the sharpness of the R wave, R peak, and the intervals between PR and RT. Yeah, so it's uh, looking at all these parameters, PR, RT intervals, uh, normalizing them between 0 and 1, fitting it all into a fuzzy logic algorithm and spitting out an abnormality score. So it's uh, low for normal ECG waveform, like this. It gives you a 0.3 over there. And it's actually making a decision as well. And it's high for an abnormal ECG wave. So go check it out. You can play with it. Don't forget to provide your feedback. And I'm not... Uh, actually recording there's no like leaderboard or anything so do let me know how you how you went what score you were able to achieve and if how many mistakes the robot was making because uh, another main feature about it is that you can change the noise level and as you increase the noise level the robot will start making more mistakes but then i'm not sure uh, how a skilled or unskilled ECG reviewer uh, will do in the noisy noisy condition, but uh, you would expect the performance will also reduce. So play the it, see how you go. So currently looking at this uh, new data set, uh, we have a template uh, for it. It's actually the patient ID, patient code, and we're meant to be a displaying that over here it's uh, it's actually not multitask it's a different task and um, it's a data by kj miller there is a paper that you need to pay for it's actually available when you when you actually look at the data uh, at the data set the paper is just uh, included uh, as a pre-print so that's the data set it's a uh, ECOG, so um, electrocorticographic uh, data. So the electrodes are placed uh, on the surface of the brain. So this is meant to be high quality EEG. This was done in uh, epilepsy patients, but while the patients had the electrodes placed, uh, implanted, uh, they were doing 16 different tasks so that's what we gonna uh, be going over and uh, trying to display this data in essentially slightly what we just learning but potentially we can uh, display it in a slightly better way than in the original papers that were uh, made quite a while ago uh, 2016 or so okay let's jump uh, into it so we popped some of this code into GPT-4. It was originally created by GPT-4 as well, so I might as well uh, continue using it. Yeah, this uh, session is from uh, yesterday. Right, so this is our HTML code. And this is, by the way, using the OpenAI new uh, text-to-speech thing, which is pretty good. I had a problem with... Uh, like Facebook is I'm blocking my videos because the because of like copyright infringement for as was actually picking on the the robot uh, talking so it was a bit odd uh, but it will be interesting to see if it's actually flags uh, this uh, voice as well I don't know if it's like a famous actor or something I don't think so yeah that didn't finish the paragraph but that's okay it actually didn't finish uh, generating as well Anyway, then we have this uh, flask. We're getting to element by ID, so we have the chart. Yeah, my chart is a really bad name. Should call it something else, something more useful. And we also have the the patient code that we are already pre-populating. So yes, those are the patients that did this specific task. And they have uh, different electrodes arrays. So 
or electrodes raised, placed in uh, different places over the brain. So we'll see what the difference between them is. And in this particular task, they were, it's actually wrong, it's not a multitask. Uh, they were looking at the difference between uh, different images. So looking at faces, images of, uh, images of faces and then images of houses. And in the EEG, supposedly we meant to be able to detect uh, the difference between uh, brain activity when uh, presented with one type of image as opposed to the other type. So currently getting an error. Just clear this for a sec. Something not JSON serializable. So we're having trouble tra JSONifying some of the data. It's obviously a bit of a problem. Yeah, we shouldn't have any cause issues because we um on the same uh, machine so the server the client and the back end are in the same place that should be fine we're still getting errors for this one and selecting a patient we can a uh, json serialize and nd array to solve that yes yeah, so we're essentially getting a uh, gpt4 to generate the uh, prompts for github copilot to use so we do like the window on load i don't think there was much change there the load patient data function on the flux side is prepared to handle file reading and conversion from mud file does it convert from yeah i'm pretty sure it does because we were able to display the data within python now we actually trying to do it uh, on the front end instead of back end Yes, yeah, so we have one, uh, we have the stimulation uh, array that shows uh, supposedly in this case uh, when the images were changed. The patients also had like fMRI data, but it's not available as part of this uh, data set. I don't know if it's available elsewhere, but then... Um, yeah, essentially no, it's, uh, it was recorded but not available. This is, by the way, an open source uh, data set that anyone can access. should have the links uh, eventually at the bottom of the Flask application of the web page. So the current problem, obviously, is that the data is not being displayed. Probably shouldn't have made any changes unless until we I popped all the code into a GPT-4 using this tokenizer as well so we don't go over the prompt uh, limit. I think it's currently 20,000 tokens. Can correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Yeah, you can have compiled this bit. Silly. Like that. Right, so we get the, the data there, but it's being displayed uh, in the back end. So this is the stimulus uh, over time. So these things are just the same. I assume it actually matters when it's uh, 0 or 100. I don't know if, uh, yeah, I have to look. This is what displayed on the screen at each point in time. So I guess there's different uh, images. There's uh, essentially 0 to 100. Uh, images and um, zero is pre post task run as uh, so it's just baseline eg baseline recorded for that long a uh, 1 to 50 is picture of uh, houses being presented and 51 to 100 is p a picture of a face being presented and one of one apparently there's one of one in there as well it's a inter-stimulus interval. So it will be between each uh, image as well. And zero will be between each task. And it's pretty clear from here that the image presentation is not random. It's being predetermined because it's being presented three times in exactly the same way. You can see those shapes are exactly identical 
So essentially the same battery of uh, 100 images uh, was presented to the patient uh, three times. Then we have the data. Currently, if I close this, should get the data. And the data is sample at uh, 1000 Hertz. There is a built-in uh, bandpass filter between uh, 0 0.15 to 200 Hertz. A one pole bandpass, so there is no sharp corner at 200 Hertz. We will see, we will we'll have an option uh, uh, in the application to look at the spectrogram at the power band for each uh, frequency component. The amplitude roller function is in the uh, another MATLAB uh, file and S rate holds the sampling rate which we're currently just printing out. So I want to bring all this into the front end um, so it's actually accessible. Yeah, this is a bit funny. This is like a filter filtering thing. This look like some sort of uh, well, there shouldn't be eye blinks in there or anything because the electrodes are on the surface of the brain. But yeah, you get some noisy, noisy electrodes. Something is going on. There's no, yeah, I have to check if there is impedant, impedance data. I don't think so. We kind of have to assume that the electrodes are placed perfectly well and the impedance is low and everything. But then this looks uh, quite uh, noisy. So I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, we have some a uh, better uh, way of uh, displaying this. So I have the populate code process data is currently empty. Don't have any styling. That's okay. We'll do that uh, later. A question: Can we do the whole HTML as well? Three thousand tokens. So that's bugger roll. It should be manageable. Three and a half K, and we pop in script JS as well. Uh, this one actually contains the structure of the files in this project, files and folders for this uh, Flask application, and also the folder structure. So it's the faces basic. Uh, it has those are the patients, patients IDs. We're already populating them, and the data. I don't know what that file is. There's nothing in the figures. Oh, that is the MRI. How big are those files? All brains folder. They're only 16 megabytes. So it must be a static. It's not obviously not functional MRI. I don't know what this will. Uh, have a look. Uh, see if we can uh, open it uh, in uh, Python as well. The dataset is providing code in uh, MATLAB, but we don't have a MATLAB license. It's just too expensive. Okay, let's pop this one as well into the prompt. Uh, this is what we have so far. Currently, the process data Python file is uh, empty and we don't have anything in the style CSS as well. We do, however, have one for the whole project. So we already have about the 15 Flask applications um, published on the server. And we would like to add this one as the additional Flask application. Uh, we're using a that's probably too early for that, but we're using uh, Ubuntu and Apache server. But currently we just uh, want the application to show something useful in the local environment. So currently the patient code drop down list is being populated, seem to be correctly, uh, but then the data is not being displayed. And we're getting the following error. 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 How do you say? Yeah. Yep, that's the one. Uh, no, I wasn't meant to send it yet, but yeah, I forgot that uh, when I say yep, it's actually sending stuff. 
clear. The other not so great thing about this text-to-speech is that it's not reading straight away. With the one I have embedded in the browser, it can read as the text comes in. Uh, for the new OpenAI one, the inbuilt one, I have to wait until the response is fully generated. So a lot of patient data should be correct because we're able to load the file in the back end and display the data. Yes, uh, we verified that the data is loading up. Uh, we have the data being plotted correctly in the back end. Well, I'm not sure if it's correctly or not, but it's being plotted. It's always the EEG. Check how many, uh, for each patient, we should have the data of like, how many electrodes they were and where they were positioned. I don't think uh, comparing between patients will be uh, viable with this data set and also not between uh, the different tasks as well. Um, so just looking at the, the one task, uh, we do have an option to load different patients, but then uh, the display, the way the data is displayed, will be just uh, comparing the different images based on the... It would be nice to see what the images were. The figures folder is empty, the data. Yeah, we have locations, so this uh, should have the number of electrodes and where they were placed on the brain. We have another four PDFs uh, with uh, references. It's funny how uh, a GitHub Copilot doesn't look at the, the other relevant files. Well, it's not funny, I don't understand why it doesn't. So I essentially had to copy-paste the the changes in the HTML, essentially all the body of the HTML into the script JS and it actually generated the code. Obviously we'll be able to tell in a second if it's actually working or not. It's missing the chat configurations. It's not good. Now the question, we obviously need to modify the Python code as well, but uh, can you modify this based on the recent changes in HTML and the uh, script JS? Can't seem to actually understand what's what's what. So we have load the data load segment. So in theory, the load data would not be necessary, would it? The other thing, it seems, seems that the copilot, when you have a commented out code below like this, it uh, might uh, actually take uh, some uh, uh, bits and pieces from the commented out code. Currently I don't see any placeholders. Yes. 